Mystery Theater. G. Marshall. I have a question to ask you. What is hell? Where is it? Some say it's a place that the soul goes to after death to be purified. Others believe that hell is right here on earth. That indeed life is a synonym for hell. Which is right? Are both right, perhaps? No, no. One thing sure, though. If life on Earth isn't hell for everyone, it certainly can be for some. Henry and Matilda Smith, to mention only two. No, Henry. I don't believe you. You couldn't have done such a thing, not you. Yes, Matilda. Me. I did it. You only imagine you did. I've heard that when people are starving, they... They imagine all kinds of things, horrifying things. They hallucinate. No hallucination. I don't believe you. Believe me. Believe me. Look, I'll take off my coat. Look and believe. No. You shed blood. Soaked in blood. Dripping with it. Dripping with blood. mystery drama, The Diamond Necklace, was adapted especially for the mystery theater from the classic story of Guy de Maupassant by George Lothar and stars Mandel Kramer and Marion Seldes. I have asked, where is hell, what is it? I have often pondered the question and came to no resolution. But surely one thing is true, that if life on earth is not itself hell, it is often a very convincing imitation. The statement you're about to hear proves that. A statement, an account, written by a man named Henry Smith in New York City in the year 1897. A memoir, if you will, of a special kind of horror. Yes, I'm going to kill myself with this gun. Put a bullet through my head and end once and for all the mortal terror, the hideous misery of these past ten years. Believe me, it is not the horrors I've been through because of the diamond necklace. Not the ten frightful years of grinding poverty and unremitting torment. Not the murder, nor the suicide, not the utter misery, not these that make me take my life. But the shock, the awful shock of what I heard today. A shock which may, for all I know, have unhinged my mind. But in any case, has destroyed all desire to go on living. Where to begin my story... Anywhere will do, I suppose, so I'll begin with that moment when, in sudden frustration, I flung the glass of wine against the wall. Henry! Oh, darling, my darling! I'm sorry, Matilda. I'm sorry. Sometimes I, I just don't think I can bear any more. It's too much. Oh, darling, dearest, the world hasn't come to an end. All right. You've had bad luck for a number of years. Bad luck? <laughs> Abominable, that's what it's been. Has anyone worked harder than I have to be a success? No, my darling. Has anyone tried more than I have? Tried and tried. Sweetheart. What happens? Every time. The glove shop. All our savings in the glove shop, and it burns to the ground on opening day. All of our savings gone. And then then the job at Mountjoy's for three years... Three solid years I break my back as a clerk, and then I'm promoted to floor walker, and what happens? But it isn't your fault you came down with the flu. It's never my fault, Matilda. That's the point. I try, and I try, and I get nowhere. This morning I go back to Mount Joyce. Two weeks ill, and I go back to the floor walker job, I think. You go out, you buy steak, a bottle of wine, and we'll splurge a little to celebrate. 
Sorry, Smith, Collier says. Collier the Great. Collier, head floor walker. Sorry, Smith. We had to give the job to Plateau. It's just too much, Matilda. I can't take it anymore. Oh, please. Look. Here. Another glass of wine. Drink this one. It will relax you. Things won't look so black. You'll see the brighter side. What brighter side? Well, our love, for one thing. How can you love a failure? I don't love a failure. I love you. And you're not a failure. Henry, dearest, we're young. We're healthy. We're in love. Together we can face anything, overcome anything. Oh, darling, that reminds me. Something came for you in the mail today. Hmm? It looks important. What is it? Yeah. Oh, expensive envelope. Addressed to me. I'll soon find out what it is. Beautiful paper. We sell this kind of heavy vellum at my... Henry, hmm? what is it? I don't understand this. What is it? Here, see for yourself. Here. Mr. and Mrs. Roger Van Wick Mountjoy the Third. Request the pleasure of your company at a dinner party the evening. Request the pleasure of our company? Well, that's impossible. He owns Mount Joyce, and you're... Just another clerk? Is that what you were going to say? Oh, no, dear. Not, not as impossible as you may think, an invitation like this. But they take a floor walker job away because you've been ill two weeks. Because maybe, just maybe, Mount Joy has something better for me. He's noticed how hard I've worked these past three years, the long hours I've put in, the overtime without pay. Henry, do you think so? Well, how else do you explain the invitation? I, I don't. I, I, Matilda, I, I, dearest, this is it. My luck has changed. Oh. Dinner with the Mountjoys. Why, it can mean only one thing, not just a promotion, but a big promotion. Oh. Now, I'll have to rent some dinner clothes. I don't have any. But darling... I can't rent a gown. You'll buy one. With what? We've got $43 oh, saved no, up. Oh, no, I'm not going to touch our savings, You've got Henry. to, darling. This is important. Take what you need. Take it all. Buy the best gown you can find. Something that will be worthy of your beauty. Oh, but, darling, you don't understand. I- I'll need more than a gown. Shoes to match a handbag or other things. That are... Oh, I'll need jewelry of some sort. A pin or a necklace. A string of pearls. Where would I get that? Yes, that is a problem. All oh. right. Unless, wait a minute. How about your friend, Mrs. Forrester? You mean, borrow something from her? Why not? Oh, no, I couldn't. She's she... loaded with jewelry of all kinds, isn't she? Every time you talk about the days when you were when you were governess to her kids, she you always mention... She has a lot of jewelry, but I'd feel awfully awkward. I'd, I'd be embarrassed. Why? Because... Matilda, you're friends. You go to her house for tea? Oh, well, once a year, maybe. Well, even so, you are friends. She likes you. Well, if you think it would be all right... Well, why shouldn't it be? Look, this invitation from Mountjoy himself, it's my big chance, Matilda, the chance I've been waiting for, working for. We can't pass it up. We have got to go to that dinner party. So, sweetheart, you go buy that gown and you borrow that jewelry. Of course, Matilda, certainly. Oh, it's awfully good of you, Mrs. Forrester. I hesitated to ask, Oh, but... nonsense, dear. Well, come along into the boudoir. We'll go through all my jewelry, and you shall have your pick. (laughs) Tell me, how is that handsome husband of yours? Oh, he's fine. Fine. And about to get his big chance at Mount Joy's, too. Oh, an opportunity I'm sure he deserves. (laughs) Well, now, my jewelry is in these boxes. Now, you start looking while I go tell Hortense to make tea for us. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Forrester. Thank you. Nothing? Well, oh, but surely, <laughs> Matilda, surely there must be something that will go with your new gown. Uh, these pearls. Uh, this, this emerald pin. Uh, one or another of these diamond brooches. Oh, surely there's... Ah, uh, so that's it. What? Oh, there is something, but you're too shy to ask for it. Well, I... Now, come. Tell me, what piece has caught your eye? That one. The diamond necklace. Mm-hmm. Oh, I, I can't ask oh, you for of that. Of course you can. And you're right. As always, your taste is impeccable. I don't know how to thank you. Well, who asked for thanks? Oh, I will ask one thing, though, Matilda, dear. Anything. Now, be sure to have the necklace back to me by Saturday. See, I'm going to a dinner party that night. Oh, but I'll return it on Thursday, the day after the Mountjoy party. Oh, any time at all, my dear, but no later than Saturday. 
And Matilda, tell your husband I couldn't be more delighted over his good fortune. He deserves it. <laughs> and so do you. Thank you, driver. No, 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 that's, that's all right. Keep the change. Matilda, wait, wait, wait. Let me help you out. Henry, look. Have you ever seen anything so beautiful? It's a mansion. All lit up. Blazing. With those new electric lights. It is a sight, isn't it? <laughs> look, the front doors are wide open. You can see people dancing in the ballroom. Oh, those gowns the women are wearing. Henry, do I look all right? You look like a fairy princess. The gown, the diamond necklace... You are a fairy princess. Come, come, princess. Let's knock them dead. <laughs> Is there a, a butler or someone that would give the invitation to? Well, it doesn't seem to be. Oh, it doesn't matter. Oh, look. What? The man coming toward us. That's Roger Mountjoy himself. Matilda, he's going to greet us personally. Ah, uh, can I help you? We're here for your party, your dinner party, Mr. Mountjoy. You, uh, you know me? Oh, of course. We, uh, we've met, have we? Well, not actually. I, I've seen you, of course, uh, any number of times at the department store, but we've never really met. Then I'm afraid I'm rather at a loss to understand what you're doing here. Well, Mr. Mountjoy, I'm Henry Smith. Oh? I'm employed by you at the department store. A clerk in sporting goods. You invited me and my wife to your party tonight. <laughs> so you're the mistake. You are the mistake that was made. The mistake? Uh, let me see the invitation. Certainly. Uh, yes, yes, addressed to Henry Smith. Spelled S-M-I-T-H. That fool secretary of mine. Oh, I don't understand. Well, it, it's simple enough, Smith. I have a friend, a close friend, named Henry Smythe. Spelled S-M-Y-T-H-E. My secretary simply sent the invitation to you instead of him. A mistake. A ridiculous mistake. Ridiculous? <laughs> what else would you call it? Unfortunate. <laughs> Embarrassing. Unfortunate, embarrassing, ridiculous, whatever you call it. I am not in the habit of inviting my clerks to my home. Now, I'll say good night to you and to your uh, decidedly attractive wife. I'm very sorry, my dear, very sorry. Being sorry doesn't help matters much, Mr. Montjoy. Oh, your secretary makes a mistake, and we make all sorts of preparations for your party. Clothes that we can hardly afford. I said fair. I'm sorry. Good night. No. You can't just put us out like this. Henry, Not put us out like, like beggars. I don't mind for myself, but my wife has looked forward to this. She's bought a new gown, new shoes, accessories. Looked forward with great anticipation. Henry, please, God. You come. cruel, you heartless. Henry. Good night, Mr. Mountjoy. Perhaps we'll meet again, Mrs. Smith. I don't think so, Mr. Mountjoy. Come, Henry. Henry, it was a mistake. An unfortunate mistake. Wrong, Matilda. A ridiculous mistake. You heard him. You heard the great Roger Van Wick Montjoy III. A ridiculous mistake, Smith. Yes, ridiculous, all right. A clerk, a clerk spends the savings of nearly two years. Maybe I could take the gown and the shoes back. Cabs and... there all across town, there and back. And to him, it's ridiculous. They might refund it. They might... Punched him in the nose is what I should have done. Punched him in the nose. Oh, and found yourself out of a job in the morning. If you still have a job at Mount Joyce. I don't give a damn if I've got a job there or not. I don't give a damn if I ever see the inside of Mount Joyce again. I don't give a damn if... Henry. What's wrong? Why are you staring at me like that? Where's the necklace? The necklace? Yes, the necklace. The diamond necklace, Matilda. Where is it? Gone. Henry. Henry, I've lost the diamond necklace. If you're a man listening to my voice, 
Put yourself in Henry Smith's shoes, and if a woman, in Matilda's, and tell me that hell doesn't exist on Earth. Go on, tell me. I'll return shortly for Act Two. thoughtful person, the emotion of terror need not be activated only by the horrendous. There are many forms of terror. The quick and sudden terror which makes the soul scream out in agony. The slow and eroding kind which makes the soul moan in mounting fear. Is the terror of a man going to his death any greater than, say, a baby wailing with hunger and in fear there may not be another meal? Henry Smith can give you the answer. I can hardly write these words. My hands are numb. Not only with the bitter cold of this heatless room, the chill of the winter wind seeping through the broken window, but also the horror, the true horror, memory brings back to me. Her words. Gone, Henry. I've lost the diamond necklace. How could you have lost it? I don't know, but it's gone. Take off your wrap, maybe. Maybe what? I don't know, maybe when it slipped from your neck, you got caught inside the wrap. Oh, I doubt if it could fall. Well, look, look anyhow. No, not here. It's gone, Henry. A fortune in diamonds lost. Now don't panic. We mustn't panic now. We'll, we'll just keep calm. And just think. Try to remember. When did you last have the necklace? When did you last notice it? I don't know. I can't remember. Well, you must. Now, did you have it in the cab going to Mountjoy's? Yes. Yes, I had it then, and I remembered... Yes. I had it when we got out and walked up the steps to the door. Are you sure of that? Oh, yes, I... I remember putting my hand on it, patting it. Did you have it in the cab on the way home from Mount Joy's? Oh. Oh, I, I don't remember. Try to remember. Please try. Did I, you or didn't you? I don't know. I was too upset to notice. Well, you've got to find that necklace. Oh, where are you going? I'm going out to find it. Well, I'll try and find the cab that we hired on the way back. I'll go to Mount Joy's house and look around outside. H have we any money? Money? Well, I can't walk to Mount Joy's. It's too far. I'll have to take a cab. Let's see. Uh, we have two dollars and some change left. All right, give it to me. Oh, Henry, wait. There's no food in the house for tomorrow. You don't get paid till Saturday. No, I don't. Henry? Oh, that scares you, doesn't it? Two dollars and change. No food in the house. No pay till Saturday. Oh, it's frightening. I, I, I think I'm going to be sick. Henry. Oh, my darling. No, Henry. All right, I'm all right. I'm all right. Expect me when you see me. Henry. What? Forgive oh, me. Oh, darling, darling, it isn't your fault. Get that thought out of your head. It isn't your fault. It is, it is my fault. It is, it is. Is that you, Henry? Yes. Why, well, I must have fallen asleep. There they dawn. You didn't find it? No. I could kill myself. Matilda, Matilda, please, sweetheart, you mustn't feel guilty about this. What we've got to do now is figure out what to do. Now, have you any idea how expensive it was, the necklace? No, but it came in a Carteret box. Carteret? The most expensive jewelers in town. Must have cost a fortune. Well, I guess there's no way out but for you to tell Mrs. Forrester. Oh, I couldn't do that. I, I, I couldn't possibly do You'll that. You'll have to. There's nothing else we can do. Oh, there's got to be something. I'd rather die than go to Mrs. Forrester and tell her I lost the necklace. I can't do it, Henry. I don't know what else. Well, replace it. We'll have to replace, replace it. Replace it? How? Well, I'll go to Carteret's and describe the necklace so they just might have a duplicate. Well, they might. And if they do, what then? 
You hand them this dollar and 39 cents I've got left and take the necklace to Mrs. Forrester? You going out of your mind? If I haven't, I'm close to it. Look, go to Mrs. Forrester tomorrow. I can't, Henry. Don't make... Please don't make me go there. When have I ever made you do anything? All right, we'll find a way out of this. All right, look, you, you go to Carteret's tomorrow and, and and see what you come up with. And we, 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 we'll just... We'll just have to take it from there. But what if they, if they don't have a duplicate? That isn't what worries me. What worries me is... What if they do? Well, I imagine I would say this necklace is quite nearly a perfect match to the one you described. Oh, yes. Yes, it is. Um, how much is it? Uh, $6,500. Madam, are you all right? Yes, quite all right. I, um, I suppose that it must be paid for all at once. All at once? I mean, there's a new way of paying for things these if days. If you mean uh, the installment buying, madam, our customers have no need of it. Yes. Well, now I'll let you know. As you wish. $6,500, you said? Yes, 6500 Thank you. Thank you. Come in, Mr. Uh, Smith. Yes, uh, Mr. Brock. Henry Smith. Frankie Matthews sent you to me, eh? Yes, he, uh, he works in the department next to mine, in hats. I got more than one client from Mount Joy's. Uh, what I'm saying, you're in good hands, Mr. Smith. Let's see you. Uh, Full name? Henry James Smith. Oh, James. Uh, address? 227 East 9th Street. 227 East. Okay. How much you want to borrow? $6,500. Uh-huh. Any collateral? If I had collateral, I'd have gone to the bank, Mr. Brock. Somebody twisted your arm to come to me. No, no, of course not. So why insult me, Mr. Smith? I don't need you. You need me, right? Yes. And the way I operate, I, uh, I make you a straight loan at interest. You pay back the principal when and as you can. As long as you pay the interest each month, we got no problem. How much interest? One percent. One percent? One percent of $6,500... That's uh, uh, $60 and, f- and 50 cents, right? Right. Well, that, that isn't too bad. I guess I can manage $60 and 50 cents a year, I guess. A month, Mr. Smith. What? One percent a month, $60 and 50 cents a month. A month? But, well, that's usury. Hey, you know something, Smith? It's a good thing I don't charge for insults. You'd be in a real mess if I did. Oh, I'm did. sorry. I didn't mean to insult you. It's just that, oh, good Lord, I couldn't possibly afford all that. Not on my salary. I'm sorry to hear it. You wasted my time. Well, no, wait. Wait now. I'm waiting. Well, I'm... <sighs> all right. All right, I'll take it. And... and don't worry. I'll find a way to pay the interest. Don't worry. <laughs> I won't. I never worry, Mr. Smith. I let my clients do it all. Why, no. No, Matilda, dear. I wasn't in the least concerned. Well, I did say I'd return the necklace Thursday. Here it is, Saturday. But I'll not be wearing it till tonight. And Well, it certainly wasn't your fault the clasp broke. Oh, but the clasp isn't... Quite the same as the old one. Look, I'll show you. Oh, I... no, no, don't bother. Just just toss the box over there. Um, <laughs> Mrs. Forrester, I was wondering... Yes, dear. Wondering... Oh, would you know of anyone who might need a governess? You? Yes. Y- you're in need of employment? Well... Henry doesn't make much, and uh, I-, I thought I might help out a little. Oh, I see. Well... See, now, I, I'm afraid I don't know of anyone who needs a governess, no, but I... Yes? Oh, no, that wouldn't be for you. What? 
Now, I'm not proud, Mrs. Forrester. If it's honest work... Well, honest have... enough, my dear, but <laughs> exhausting. You see, a friend of mine, a very large family, needs someone to do washing. A washerwoman? I told you it wouldn't be for you. Well, I'll ask around among my friends and let you know if I come up with anything. Thank you. Now, just let me be sure I have your address correct. Oh, we're moving. Are you? Oh, do you know where? Yes. Uh, 121 Delahanty Street. Delahanty? But, my dear, isn't that... Well, isn't that thought to be something about a uh, slum area? Oh, not that bad. Matilda... Child, has something gone wrong? Are you and Henry in some sort of trouble you're not telling me about? No, no. Well, then, then why are you willing to take a job as a washerwoman? Why are you moving to Delahanty Street? Oh, very well. I, I won't press you, but please do keep one thing in mind. I'm, I'm always willing and ready to help you in any way. You will keep that in mind, won't you, dear? Yes. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Forrest. Goodbye. Oh, goodbye, my dear. And and thank you for returning the necklace. Oh, if you ever want to borrow it again... Um, I... Thank you. I, I don't think I will. Not ever again. We made a deal, Smith. A month ago to the day... Now you come in and tell me you can't pay the interest. Well, not all of it, Mr. Brock, but... But what? I've got $34 of the 60. 60 and 50 cents. Yes. And if, if you'll just accept that... Sure. Sure, let's have it. You bring the rest tomorrow at the same time. Six o'clock. But that's impossible. Impossible, huh? It's taken me a month to get $34 together. How am, I, how am I going to get practically as much again in just a day? That's your problem. Well, but it's a problem I can't solve. Look, I'll pay you. I'll pay you every cent I owe you, but you've got to give me time. Time is money, Mr. Smith. And you haven't got much of either. Let me show you something. You see this? Yes. What is it? A switchblade knife. Very sharp, Mr. Smith. Razor sharp. Now, I'll tell you how it's going to be. You come here tomorrow at 6 o'clock and you have the money, or I'll take a piece out of your right ear with this knife. Mr. Brock. You come back tomorrow at 6 o'clock, and if you still haven't got the money, I take a piece out of your left ear. You, you're a... I know what I am. You better know what you are. You're a loser, Smith, and you're a loser because you're a sucker. Tomorrow, Smith. Same time. Oh. And, uh, bring your wife. My wife? What for? Who knows? Maybe she could even, maybe, uh, save you from losing your life. Who knows, Smith? <laughs> If ever terror, cold, chilling terror, struck through a man's soul, it strikes through Henry Smith's. Snared by circumstances he did not create, he is now like an animal caught in a trap, quivering with terror, shaking with horror, and all because of a diamond necklace. A diamond necklace borrowed and lost. I'll return shortly for Act Three. This is Hugh Downs for the U.S. What bitter, cruel, insupportable tragedy can smash a human life because of one mischance? Henry and Matilda Smith have discovered this to their sorrow. Had Henry or Matilda thought for a moment they might have realized that the party invitation from Roger Mountjoy had to be a mistake. In any case, had they realized this, certainly Matilda would never have borrowed that diamond necklace from Mrs. Forrester and lose it. And had Matilda not lost it, well, let Henry tell us. The wind outside 
is strengthening, getting colder. Snow was beginning to fall. The last snow I shall ever see. Would that I had never seen the light of day, never been born. When I remember what took place in Brock's office the next day. Going to his office filled me with fear. But not going would have made me more fearful still. I entered his office in a cold sweat and found myself trembling with nerves as he said, I thought you'd find the money somehow. I was sure of it. I haven't found it, Mr. Brock. I haven't got it. You didn't bring your wife, so I, uh, I figured you had the money. No. Maybe you don't hear too good, even with ears. You remember this? I see you do. But also you remember maybe that I said bring your wife. Well? I remember, Mr. Brock, but look, give me a, just a little time. No, not time. This is what I'm going to give you. Oh! <laughs> hey, look, you see this? This little piece of pink stuff on the tip of the knife, that's you, Smith. Just a little, <sighs> very little piece of your ear. <sighs> but don't you worry about it. It's bleeding a lot, but it'll heal. Now, you be smart. Go and get your wife, Smith. Bring her here. She's working. Yeah, yeah, I know. Doing the washing of some rich dame. Ruining her hands, ruining her looks, her body. Especially her looks and her body. Now, you don't want that, now, do you? Mr. Brock, she's helping me get the money to pay you. There's easier ways. I will not bring my wife here. You think I don't know what you mean by easier ways? Oh, you know, all right. You're smart, real smart. Now, look, let me lay it out for you. You're into me for 6500 bucks. Now, like I tell you, I don't care about you paying off the principal. I got ways of getting that in time. What I want now is the interest. Now, your wife could make more than that in one night. You dirty rotten. Hold it. You miserable. Hold it unless you want me to do more with this. Hold it. Wait, give me back that knife. Then you give it back. Stay away from me. I warn you, stay away. Why? You'll use the knife on me? I don't think so, Smith. You're going to go and get that sexy wife of yours and you're going to bring her here. You, you, you. Matilda, you're home. Yes, my, my back was... Uh, I was working over the tubs today and it began to pain again, so I... White as a sheet and trembling. Henry, what happened? I killed a man, Matilda. I killed a man. No. Oh. Brock, the moneylender. No, Henry, I don't believe you. You couldn't have done such a thing, not you. Yes. Yes, Matilda, I did it. No, you just imagine that you did. I've heard that, that when people are starving, they imagine all kinds of things, horrifying things. They hallucinate. No they hallucination. Do... I don't believe you. Believe me. Me, look. I'll take off my coat. Look. Oh, God. And believe. Your shirt, blood. Soaked oh. in blood. Dripping with take blood. It. Take it off quickly. Take it off and I'll wash you it. You and... can't wash it. Nobody must know. And you'd have to wash it in the kitchen or the bathroom down the hall. There's no running water in this room. Oh, to take it off and hide it. I can't believe it. I just can't believe you. You're always so gentle. He was threatening me with a knife. He cut my ear and he was threatening me again. If I didn't... If I didn't... Didn't? Bring you to him. Me? What would he want with me? I don't know. But he must have a reason. He wouldn't threaten you with a knife and... Unless... Oh. <laughs> What's so funny? <laughs> I was thinking. <laughs> oh, just thinking. What a surprise he'd have in store. Surprise? Brock? <laughs> he must have heard how I looked a month ago. He doesn't know what that month has done to me. <laughs> Why didn't you tell him? <laughs> Why didn't you tell him it's since the night I lost the necklace? <laughs> since the night of the Mount Joy's party. <laughs> the party that looked so exciting. It was going to be so thrilling. <laughs> My secretary made a <laughs> A ridiculous mistake. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. Oh, it was all a mistake. Sweet. A horrible. Oh, Sweetheart, oh, sweetheart, Worse please. Worse than horrible, I lost the necklace. 
reckless. I'm the one who couldn't face Mrs. Forrest. Please, Jim. Why couldn't I? I'm the one who made you borrow all that no. money. I'm the one who made you a murderer. Oh, God, forgive me for what I did. You did nothing, darling. You lost a diamond necklace. It could have happened to anyone. And it's over now. All of the misery is over. Oh, oh, oh. Yes, Brock is dead. I killed him. But I did it in self-defense. I'm not excusing myself. Don't think that. You kill a man, you take a life, whatever the reason, you must pay. Somehow or other, you must pay, and I will. But in the meantime, we're out from under the burden, the awful burden of paying that monthly interest. Even the loan, we can forget it. Well, who knows about it? It was between Brock and me. Who else would know? All I'm saying is that what's happened gives us a break, gives us time to recover and make a fresh start. No more 12-hour washing days for you. No more extra jobs for me. We can get some rest. We can eat better. We can restore our health so that... Who, who, who can that be? The police. I don't see how. Well, one way to find out. Yes? Hi. May I come in? Who are you? Uh, well, I'm afraid we never had the pleasure of meeting face-to-face, -face, Mr. Smith, but... Arnie told me about you, and maybe uh, he told you about me. Arnie? Arnie Brock. I'm his wife, Doris. Or I guess I should say, his widow. No. You won't do this. I won't let you do it. What else is there to do? Something. We'll find a way. You go behind my back, you go to that Brock woman, and you... I agree to do what she wants, what her husband wanted. There's no other way. If I don't do this, we'll both sicken and die. This way, once the loan is paid... But it will never be paid, Matilda. The, the interest alone, the monthly interest... No interest. Not anymore. What are you talking about? Well, I agreed to become a... a hostess. On one condition, I would pay off the loan with my earnings, but no more interest. And she agreed? Well, there seems to be a shortage of girls, of compliant girls. Here. What's this? It's the agreement I made her sign. No interest, and... Now, would you please hook me up in the back? No. Henry, please. In that dress. In the very gown you bought for the Mountjoy party. It's brand new, Henry. I never got to wear it very long. <laughs> never got a chance to dance in it, as I thought I would. Oh, that music was so lovely. Remember? When we came through the open front doors, all those gay people dancing and drinking and chatting. <laughs> so many lovely gowns. <laughs> All those gorgeous colors and the electric lights. I've never seen them before. So bright, so glowing. Oh, the music. <laughs> the music. Oh, if we'd only dance together, Henry. <laughs> one dance. Just one. If we only had that to remember to dream on. To dance with me. Dance with me. No, Take me dance. in your arms and dance with me. <laughs> Don't you hear the music? It, it, it's the waltz. It's a waltz, Henry. They're playing a waltz, a divine waltz, and I'm in your arms, floating in your arms, turning and turning my feet, scarcely touching the floor. Stop it, stop it, Matilda. Turning and turning. Matilda, look out to the window. No. 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 She was dead when I reached her. Five stories below, in the courtyard, crumpled, broken, dead. We buried her in the gown that she loved so much. The only pretty gown she'd ever had. And I saw the coffin lowered into the ground and heard the first shovelful of dirt fall on her face. 
I made her a promise. A promise it took ten years to keep. 498, 499, 500. The debt is paid, Mrs. Brock. Look, uh, tell me something. After she died, your wife, you could have taken off. Thrown the coop, I'd never have found you. Instead, you worked yourself to death, close to it anyways, for ten years. How come? It's the way she would have wanted it. Excuse me, I, I, I beg your pardon. Yes? Are, are you, by any chance, are you Henry Smith? Yes. Yeah. Why, Mrs. Forrester. Well, of all things. Now, I saw you sitting here in the park, and I thought, now, that man reminds me of someone. And then I realized, Henry Smith. <laughs> it's been a long time. Yes, a very long time. And how is Matilda? She stopped coming to see me oh, quite a few years ago, and I, I tried to get in touch with her, but you'd moved and left no forwarding address. She's dead, Mrs. Forrester. Oh. Ten years now. Oh, I am so sorry. She was such a delightful little person. So serious, so sincere. I remember lending her a diamond necklace to go to a party. She accidentally broke the clasp, but really, I've never seen anyone so terribly upset over such a little thing. A diamond necklace is not a little thing, Mrs. Forrester. Oh, well, I suppose not, but... Not if it were a real diamond necklace with genuine diamonds. Mine were paste. <laughs> Fake diamonds. Worth no more than, oh, a hundred dollars. Oh, Mr. Smith. Mr. Smith, what? Oh, please. Please, someone. Someone help me. This, this man has fainted. <laughs> cannot live with it. The shock. The horror of learning that the diamond necklace was a fake. It doesn't matter now. Nothing has mattered to me since Matilda died. If, as I've heard, there's a life after death, this gun will take me to Matilda in that other life. If not... I'll at least be out of this one. In the words of Guy de Maupassant, how would life have been for these two if Matilda had not lost the necklace? Who knows? How strange life is. How small a thing will ruin or save one. I'll return shortly. We owe our story to certainly one of the greatest of all short story writers, Guy de Maupassant. I've suggested in the past that we give a thought, a brief moment of thanks to such men as Oscar Wilde and Edgar Allan Poe, to whom, really, we owe so much. To that list, let's add Monsieur de Maupassant. I'm sure he'd be pleased. Our cast included Mandel Kramer, Marion Seldes, Reiner Rayburn, and Leon Janney. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.
News Radio, WELM, Elmira, serving the Twin Tiers in AM Stereo. Urging design changes on DC 10s and a busy day for Congress. With Mutual PM, I'm Carrie Moran in Los Angeles. Today's crash of a Korean Airlines jetliner in Libya is the second DC 10 disaster in eight days. A United DC 10 crashed in Sioux City, Iowa on July 19th. The two deadly incidents are prompting a repeated call from the International Airline Pilots Association to have the FAA ground the planes for structural modifications. IAPA spokesman Daniel Smith. The DC 10 has, has managed manifested vulnerability to major components uh, that can cause, well, using a single, in the event of a single site accident, can cause catastrophic results in other systems, ulti ultimately resulting in a crash. But McDonnell Douglas spokesman Don Hansen says a grounding order would be out of line. It needs to be remembered that the accident that happened in Iowa last week and the uh, one today in Tripoli, uh, there's just no indication of any sort that there's any relationship between them. The DC-10s have a 3.8% crash rate compared to 1.5% for Boeing 727.